They are counting. The ice is cleared away, and Challenger should be going away very soon. In the chill of a Florida morning, the world held its breath as the space shuttle Challenger stood poised on the launch pad, ready to embark on a historic mission. One. Little did anyone know, this day would forever change our perception of space exploration. At 11.40 a.m. this morning, space program experienced a national tragedy with the explosion of the space shuttle Challenger. Basically a major malfunction. Today, we're taking a closer look at one of the most tragic events in space exploration the catastrophic failure of the Space Shuttle Challenger on January 28, 1986. Seven astronauts lost their lives just because it was too cold? Isn't this a scientific absurdity? And in a multi-million dollar project, was it not a negligence of epic proportions? We will discuss this in detail, but first, how did the Space Shuttle Challenger came to be, and why was it important? Challenger embarked on its journey not just as a spacecraft but initially as a test vehicle, originally designated as STA-099. Rockwell International, tasked with its construction, diligently worked to convert the test vehicle into a fully operational spacecraft. This involved significant structural modifications, such as strengthening the wings and installing a real crew cabin to accommodate astronauts during their missions. Main objective of the Challenger was to bring space travel down from NASA exclusivity to everyday usage, just like ordinary air travel. Despite meticulous preparation, Challenger encountered setbacks on its path to the stars. Technical issues, including a hydrogen leak and engine cracks, caused delays in its inaugural flight. However, perseverance prevailed, and on April 4, 1983, Challenger launched successfully on mission STS-6 marking a triumphant moment in space exploration. This mission saw the execution of the first spacewalk of the shuttle program, as astronauts ventured into the vast expanse beyond Earth's atmosphere. Challenger served as a platform for groundbreaking achievements, breaking barriers and opening new frontiers in space exploration. Notably, Challenger welcomed aboard the first American female astronaut, Sally Ride, and the first black astronaut, Guion Bluford. Their presence on Challenger marked a step forward in inclusivity and diversity within the astronaut corps. Challenger also achieved remarkable technical feats. It ushered in a new era of space exploration with the first night launch. Furthermore, Challenger played a crucial role in the operational debut of Space Lab, a European space laboratory designed for experiments in microgravity. On January 28, 1986, the day began with anticipation and excitement, as Challenger prepared for its 10th mission. Seven astronauts were part of the crew, Francis R. Scobie, the commander, and Michael J. Smith, the pilot. Also on board were mission specialists Ronald McNair, Ellison Onizuka, and Judith A. Resnick, along with payload specialist Gregory Jarvis. Additionally, Krista McAuliffe, a teacher chosen for the Teacher in Space project, was among the crew. However, Amidst the cold morning air, concerns lingered about the integrity of the shuttle's solid rocket boosters in the low temperatures. Despite these concerns, Challenger launched at 11.38 a.m. Eastern Time, surrounded by an unprecedented level of media attention. T-10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 1, and liftoff. Liftoff of the 25th Space Shuttle mission, and it has cleared the tower. However, just 73 seconds after liftoff, in full view of television cameras, the world watched in horror as the Space Shuttle Challenger broke apart. Challenger, go with throttle up. Challenger, go with throttle up. Aerodynamic forces caused the shuttle to disintegrate, while the two solid rocket boosters remained airborne until they were remotely destroyed by the NASA range safety officer. The crew compartment reached an altitude of 12.3 miles before plummeting into the Atlantic Ocean. What appears to be a major catastrophe in America's space program, Challenger, only seconds after leaving the launch pad, 
according to NASA, has exploded in mid-air. The once promising mission came to a devastating end, leaving a nation and the world in shock and mourning. The immediate aftermath of the disaster was marked by disbelief and sorrow. Flight controllers at NASA's Mission Control Center scrambled to assess the situation, grappling with the magnitude of the tragedy unfolding before their eyes. Today is a day for mourning and remembering. Nancy and I are pained to the core by the tragedy of the Shuttle Challenger. We know we share this pain with all of the people of our country. This is truly a national loss. I regret that I have to report that based on very preliminary searches of the ocean where the Challenger impacted this morning, these searches have not revealed any evidence that the crew of Challenger survived. Following a three-month search and recovery mission, the crew compartment, along with human remains and numerous other shuttle fragments, were retrieved from the ocean floor. The precise moment of the crew's demise remains uncertain though it's believed that some crew members may have initially survived the spacecraft's breakup. With no escape mechanism on board, the crew compartment's impact with the ocean surface at terminal velocity was deemed unsurvivable due to its extreme violence. Fragments retrieved of the shattered shuttle were tenderly brought to the surface, and remains that could be identified were returned to the families of the fallen astronauts, while others were laid to rest in a solemn ceremony at Arlington National Cemetery. Following the Challenger disaster, the Rogers Commission was tasked with unraveling the sequence of events that led to the tragedy. Their investigation uncovered a critical flaw in the design of the solid rocket boosters, particularly concerning the integrity of the O-rings. These small rubber seals, meant to prevent gas leaks, proved to be susceptible to failure under certain conditions, such as extreme cold temperatures. The Commission's findings revealed that the O-ring failure was not an isolated incident, but rather a systemic issue that had been overlooked. Concerns were raised by the engineers at both NASA and Morton Theocol, the company who built rocket boosters for the space shuttle. Roger Boisjoli, a lead engineer at Morton Theocol, had written to the vice president to ensure management of the seriousness of the O-ring problem, and that the result could be catastrophic if not handled properly. Soon after the accident, Boisjoli was removed from the job and suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder. Another engineer who raised a voice was Bob Ebeling. He told his supervisors that this shuttle could not sustain the freezing temperatures, but no one paid any attention to him. On the morning of the launch, Ebeling told his wife, it is going to blow up. For decades afterwards, he blamed himself for not doing enough, that he should have even gone in with a gun and stopped them. NASA's ambition for routine spaceflight was driven by a desire to fulfill its promise of making access to space affordable and commonplace. However, as the frequency of shuttle missions fell far short of projections, the agency faced mounting pressure to demonstrate progress and maintain public interest. This pressure to uphold the image of routine space travel played a significant role in the decision-making process leading up to the Challenger launch. In addition to internal pressures, External factors such as political and public relations considerations also weighed heavily on NASA's decision-making. President Ronald Reagan's upcoming State of the Union address, which was set to highlight the inclusion of Krista McAuliffe in the mission, added urgency to the launch timeline. Delaying the launch would not only have disrupted the carefully orchestrated PR strategy, but also risked political fallout for NASA and its funding. Despite the risks posed by the cold temperatures and the concerns raised by engineers, the decision to proceed with the launch was ultimately driven by a combination of technical constraints, scheduling pressures, and the desire to maintain public and political support. The Challenger disaster sent shockwaves through NASA and the public, forever altering the perception of space exploration. The tragic loss of seven courageous astronauts shattered the illusion of routine spaceflight and forced a re-evaluation of safety protocols and management practices within NASA. Significant changes were implemented to enhance safety and foster a culture of accountability within NASA. Recommendations from the Rogers Commission led to improvements in communication channels, risk assessment processes, and oversight mechanisms. These reforms aim to ensure that safety concerns are addressed transparently and decisively, without succumbing to external pressures or organizational complacency.
I know it's hard to understand, but it's painful things like this happen. It's all part of the process of exploration and discovery. It's all part of taking a chance and expanding man's horizons. The future doesn't belong to the faint-hearted. It belongs to the brave. The Challenger crew was pulling us into the future, and we'll continue to follow them. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. Goodbye.